That was good. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. So good to be here with you, isn't it? Today's uh, session, I decided I'm going to be talking about uh, the things that we hold on to. But before we go into the session, I would like to do an intro and introduce myself. Uh, if you do not know me, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. Have a healing center here in Glendale, California, the Jewel City, and it's called Heal Within, where we help you transform lives for the better. Hi, Zartig. How are you? Hello, Jack. Um, so, today I wanted to talk about and even get your input and uh, let's have this topic of conversation about the things we hold on to. So, why did I come up with the things we hold on to? What is it that we hold on to? Uh, we hold on to uh, greetings. We hold on to so much, but we hold on to memories, we hold on to weight, we hold on to certain habits. As a clinical hypnotherapist, the things that I work and I help most of my clients with is habits and behaviors that they come in and they want to change from uh, body image, uh, summer is coming up, so we want to drop weight, and I call it drop weight because it's not about losing weight. Uh, if you have at any time decided to do uh, a weight loss program and in your mind you have set, I'm losing weight, why can't I lose weight, why can't I hold on to the weight, because it's all about loss. And I've talked about this over and over, and I will reiterate, stop saying I am losing weight because subconsciously our mind thinks of losing as a loss. And it's the most drastic thing that we think about, which is going to be a segue to today's topic. But again, it's about behaviors and it's about habits that we change. Another thing that we change uh, through hypnosis is stress and anxiety, right? The biggest one, anxiety and lack of sleep, insomnia, fears and phobias. So when someone asks me exactly what you do, I say, yes, I can help you with all of that. But the work that I do, and I truly have come to pride myself in the work that I do, is treat you as a whole instead of just the issues you come in for. So if I have a young teenager here for anxiety, for stress, or another one who comes over here for smoking, and it's not cigarettes, it's vaping, and they want to stop that habit, which, as a segue, just for one few uh, one minute, I want to talk about vaping, and it's harsher, it's, it's direct line to your tongue, to all the nervous system and it's just like a direct line into your body which I think in a way it's more addictive and worse than smoking cigarettes because that oil that concentrated oil of vaping it's more harmful it's direct nicotine going inside your body and it's worse than with the cigarettes that has not only the paper, uh, it, they're both worse, but 
at least there is a filter that filters it. So for the parents who see their children or even some adults who are vaping, I just want you to know that it's not cleaner, it's not better, it's not healthier than cigarettes and smoking a cigarette. But that's a sight, and I'm working with clients to stop and reduce the vaping and overcome that entire smoking cessation. Now, aside, it's trauma, it's hurt, it's guilt, it's resentment all those emotional things that we hold on to. So why did I bring it up is because sometimes we hold on to things and promises that we make either to someone or to ourselves as kids, as children, or even as young teens in our young adulthood that we completely forget and the consequences even though they show up throughout our life we don't really fully embrace and understand it until we are fixing or changing another habit hypnosis is the answer to many affective disorders and addiction you are very good, and I believe there are such great benefits here. Thank you, Jack. So the reason I'm bringing up uh, holding on to all this guilt and resentment and shame and all that from the time is, here's the thing. Consciously, we look, listen, and learn. Subconscious, the subconscious part of our mind is where it stores all information. Everything that we look, listen, and learn consciously, we function, it gets stored in our subconscious mind. It goes and sits there dormant until something triggers it. And then the subconscious, just like rewinding a video camera, it reverts back finds that one episode, finds that one session, finds that one timeline in life and brings back or opens the files for us. Or we can view that one segment so that we understand what went on, so that we understand what's going on. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because as a child, I recall, let me talk about my own first. I remember when I was about uh, 14 years old and my grandpa passed away. Actually, I was much younger, about 13 and a half years old when my grandpa passed away. Now, my grandfather meant the world to me. I mean, no matter who was in my life and who I loved, my parents, my grandmother, my grandfather was my savior. He was my protector. I remember him to this very day. I can see him walking up. And the moment I would see him walking from wherever he went to shopping or something, and I would sit uh, in front of that window and watch. If, he, if I saw him, a, a man in his height and everything, walk down with his beret, I would just run, open the door, and just run to Grandpa. So for a little girl, he was the world to me. When he passed away, and I didn't realize that I had that promise made until a few years ago when I did deep work on myself, you know, talk about heal within I had to do my own heal within work. And it was that time that I recalled a promise that this little girl did. 
And my promise to me was there will be no man who can love me as much as grandpa did. And wow, what a powerful statement for a young girl to make. And guess who believed it? I did. Guess who stored it? I did. And I held on to that word. I held on to that statement. I held on to that affirmation as if a reality. And believe it or not, no one could have gotten to that level. Now, as a little girl, here's what I learned when I did my own work and I talked to my mom and long time I had talked to my grandmother. No one could persuade me differently. No man could measure up to grandpa until later in life, years ago, I had learned he was not that perfect. He was not the ideal husband, the ideal man. He, he had his flaws. I mean, the guy was not a perfection. He had his own flaws. But a little girl does not see those flaws. So that is the message and the affirmation I had held on to. And it worked for the longest time until it no longer worked. And I was wondering what was amiss. Why is it that no one could measure up? Not realizing that subconsciously I had someone higher than everybody else, which he wasn't. So by doing my work and understanding what I, which I call evoking, evoking that message, invoking that information, and then embracing the reality. Wow, what a concept. He was not perfect, right? What a concept. This is what I held on to. And I did this disservice to me. And I may have done a disservice to so many men who came into my life. And for whatever reason, subconsciously, not knowingly, I did not allow myself to be loved fully and completely by them. Now, does that make sense? So the evolve part comes to evolving to that level of saying, ah, time to heal within and let go of that perception. So I'm getting ready to get on a flight from Texas so I can't watch the live today. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the conference, which is tomorrow. Yes, Michael. And uh, so that's one um, message. But the reason I truly passionately wanted to talk about is my client, I have two clients who came in just this week. I mean, I work with clients all the time. But when I do the deep work of working with the trauma, working with what we hold on to, either we pack it on emotionally and we, I have a client who came in just this week that in pain, constant pain, and overweight, cannot sleep well, and doing our, during our session, she's been holding on to her weight as a safeguard, as a protection. Um, she cannot sleep well because her mind and her body are constantly every hour on the clock less than an hour. She says, every 40 minutes, every hour, I'm constantly awake and I'm awake for a few moments until I go shut down and then I'm back. That body is constantly on alert system. Excuse me. Why? 
So that in itself, constantly, this body going through this and holding on to that weight, not doing anything as far as exercise and everything. She is in a relationship, and I call this an emotional, mental relationship. She calls it marriage. And this is not for everybody, but I'm truly talking about this to specifically women. And there are men, I'm not dissing that part of it, but when we emotionally and mentally say, I am in a relationship with this person, and yet this person, this is that person, emotionally, physically, mentally, she calls it, he is my husband. But the husband does not live with her. The husband only provides for housing and her car and her insurance and some food money. And they are legally married, but the man is with someone else. She knows about it. So in a way, she's dissing herself and uh, accepting that part. And there is another part that she's holding on to is like, but if I, um, okay, so why is she having insomnia problems? Through the therapy, we get to the level of, because she never knows when that door is going to be opened, when he's going to walk in, and when he's going to come and take her, literally. When he feels like it, walks in, takes it, and has that intimacy, or what, let's call it what exactly it is, has sex with her, and then uses that part, thank you very much, and instead of wang bang, thank you ma'am, and we're becoming raw in here, he leaves. At the end of the month, she has to go and ask for the money, for the rent and everything. Now. So what we are dealing with here, she's got the overweight to protect herself so no one else likes her. No one is supposed to like her. No one is supposed to see her. No one is supposed to appreciate who she is. So in a way, this body is guarding her and protecting her. In a way, the body is also doing its best to protect and guard her from the harshness that her body gets treated by. Now, why does she constantly have to stay awake? Because she never knows when that door opens and walks in. So some people will turn around and say, why doesn't she leave him? Because to this day, she did not believe, truly believe, that she can leave. Self-esteem shattered because through her life from the time that she was a little girl, she was told she is ugly, she is fat. They even burned her leg, they burned her fingers. And this little girl did not know She had any worth living. She has attempted many times to take her own life, but she believes in God and in Jesus and says, I can't do that. So she came in because she doesn't even have enough work and funds to be able to sustain herself without his support. Now, this is someone that you would say is underprivileged. And yet there are so many who are privileged and they still feel stuck. There are so many who live in like a palace but believe they have no way out. So what is it that we hold on to? In a way, the trauma 
and the words given and said and repeated that this little girl, this young innocent child, or this teenage girl came to believe herself to be. Not worthy, not beautiful, ugly, stupid, fat. So, that's called emotional and mental. Abusive, yes. But when someone comes to believe those, and no matter what grades, how much they try, and they get a B, they get an A, they come home, and they still get the negative, those A's and B's, unless there is someone to nurture and uh, empower that child at a different place, it has to be more powerful and to be embedded that over overdoes the recording that has been played and embedded in their subconscious in order for them to say, wow, I can amount to something. I am more than I am. I do matter. I am not ugly. I am, I am smart because if a child is getting an A and a B, that there is a smartness. So I'm saying all that because that trauma that was embedded into this woman and to this day, she didn't see a way out. She didn't believe she's worthy is because of what happened as a little girl and then accumulated to when she was in college and she was attacked. And then after that, her children and the connection to her children and then to the person she is with and in her belief system is I am married and I can't leave this person, but it's okay, whatever he does to me. So, the self-esteem is what we started working with. Not doing anything, but to honor who she is, to honor the little girl who was smart, to honor the person that has the ability to get a better job or ask for a full-time job, to start accepting the best in her. That's what it is. So once she had evoked all that, the first thing to do is, once that's all evoked and acknowledged, is to accept and embrace who she is, to find herself. Now, if you cannot find the true authentic self, then we are, you know, it's all those layers and that's the layers that we hold on to. Those are the titles. Those are the belief systems, which in a way, it's nothing but BS. Really, it's a BS. And BS is a belief system. It's not a negative way, but a belief system that a child came to believe. It's not about blame. It's not about blaming this man. It's not about blaming the mother. It's not about blaming a teacher because that's under the water. It's under the rug. Let's bypass that. And instead of the victim mentality, the victim mode of blame is, well, acknowledge what was. Yes, it's emotional. Let's release the emotions. Express it and start honoring who you are today starting today starting today who do you want to be what do you want to feel what is your big dream 
How do you want to look like? What, what kind of a body image do you want for yourself? Where would you like to live instead of this crummy studio that she said, I'm, I'm, I go and clean and do that. I am an assistant nurse and I also clean and everything, but my house is a shamble. That's because your house is your home. Your house is where you go in and you don't feel like cleaning because internally she didn't feel clean. Make sense? So in two sessions, she sent me pictures of how she has went, she has gone to Trader Joe's and bought a $5 bouquet of flowers. And with that $5, that it brightened her and she tidied her studio place. And she feels good walking inside. Even she says to me that even buying the flower and being at the check stand, buying that $5 flower made me smile because I couldn't wait to get home and put it in a glass. So, the beginning of the heal within started from the moment she drove towards getting those flowers. And then getting into the check stand is like making that move, paying for something to make her happy. And it's not flowers, it can be something else. But it's the gesture of, I'm doing something for me. Because I matter. You see, healing, the work that I do, is to peel away some of those, like, layers of crud. Layers of things that you know, have tarnished layers of emotional baggage, emotional weight, and sometimes trauma that gets stored in our body becomes painful. And it's that pain that starts acting up and we think of it as a physical pain and that's why sometimes when people go to the doctors and they do all kinds of checks, they do all kinds of tests and MRIs and things like that, and they can't put a finger on the cause, not the symptom, but the cause. And that's because so much of that cause, it's such deep traumatic things. And yet it's so simple. So in your life, when you think back, and if you were to do the reverse, going back to another time and a place, going back to another time and a place, if there is a discomfort, if there is a belief, if there is a behavior or a habit that you have been holding on to, that truly no longer benefits you. Think about it. Where did it stem from? When did you believe that to be true? Who was it that you were looking up to? To what they said, what they did, what they showed you, that you came to hold on to? If it is weight, if it is a burden, a guilt, those are all dense, heavy, heavy energy. Sometimes we have to sit back and close our eyes and hum. Oh. 
one more time. Tapping that little girl, that little boy at the bosom of the mom. That when we feel that heartbeat at the chest of the person who loves us and safeguards us, and they pat us on our back to calm us down. It's the most relaxing thing that there is. And we forget to do it for ourselves. This technique, tapping, gently and easily with your eyes closed and just humming. Oh. Oh. is the best gift you can give to yourself to awaken the child within to allow the healing within to begin to connect yourself to all of who you are so today, this very day, begin to accept and appreciate who you are. Begin to honor yourself and say the affirmations. I rise, I matter. I accept and appreciate myself for all the things that I have within me. My gifts, my uniqueness, I am smart. I am worthy. I have come a long way. And today I choose. I choose for the better. I choose for the healthier. I choose to take the steps that I want for a better life, for a healthier life, for a stronger me for a better body image that I want to create, not to lose, but I want to create. This is what I want in my life. This is what I want to bring into my life. And it can be abundance of health, abundance of joy, abundance of love, abundance of success, abundance. You know, it's abundance and blossoming just like that one flower from Trader Joe's. Oh, they should give me credit for this. But it's bringing that joy within that puts a smile on your face. And there is nothing more beautiful than you gifting you. Okay? Does that make sense? So today I want you to truly understand so much of all the BSs that you have been holding on to and let it go. Honor yourself. Tap when you hear, say loving things to yourself, and appreciate and accept all of you, and then start making the choices. Because when we say, I want to make a change in my life, change starts here. Change starts within. Change starts the moment we say, I'm ready. Today is the day. This moment is the day. Even right here, right now. Let's make a declaration and say, today I make this choice. And if you like this message, by all means, 
I'm going to put a link. I want you, we're going to have this entire thing on YouTube. I want to invite you to come and watch my other uh, YouTube Heal Talk sessions, my other YouTube. Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. See, that in itself, I'm inviting you to come and see and listen and learn more stuff. There's going to be more stuff, more techniques, more things coming your way. Because this is what Heal Talk Tuesday is going to be. And I invite you to message me, to uh, put anything over here that you would like, because I will respond to each and every one. If there is an email, um, next week is a very important week. And next week is April 24th. And that's going to be a whole different segment. I might not even be at my desk. I might be live somewhere else. I don't know yet. But no matter where it is, I am going to be with you. And I invite you to also join not only my Heal Talk Tuesdays on YouTube, but also you, we're going to put a click over here for you to sign up to my website, become a part of our newsletters, and be involved with me, my workshops, and every single day, I have a bigger, bigger, bigger vision. And I want nothing more but to share, to bring, to heal, to help, and to make you and my community a stronger, healthier place. Helping you transform for the better every single day. Uh, thank you, Jack, for being here. And every single one of you who is here live with me, thank you. Hi, Chris. Hi, Andrew John. Rich. Hello, Rich. Mr. Cowboy Hat, haven't seen you in a long time. And, you know, in in a way, every single one that I know that is a part of, been a part of my community that I surround myself with golden heart people who have truly learned so much from their life and are helping others. I am... I am truly blessed to have you uh, in my energetic field, in my community here on Facebook, in my community that I know you personally, that I have met with you, and together we are doing bigger things and greater things for the benefit of all humanity. So, thank you. May God bless you and the spirit, the light from above, the universal light, whoever it is that you believe in. I want you also to believe in your gifts, your talents, your goodness, and do good and be good. It's time to evoke what was. Embrace what is and evolve to what we desire and what will be. Because you matter, I matter, we matter. I stands for illness, but when we become a we, it creates a wellness. Thank you, God bless you, and I will see you next week.